So while we await the president in North Carolina this evening, we're going to bring Trey Gowdy, former chairman of the House Oversight Committee and now a Fox News contributor. Good to see you uh, this evening, sir. Yes, um, I, I want to ask you about the contempt that two members of the Bush administration were held in tonight. We've only got about a minute or two, we think, before the president comes out. Your thoughts on the contempt proceedings for Bill Barr um, and also for uh, the Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross? I'll do it quickly. I mean, Barr is ostensibly being held in contempt for not turning over a document. He has no legal obligation to turn over. In fact, it'd be against the law to do so. The counter argument is you guys held Eric Holder in contempt. We did, 400 days after we asked for the documents. Here's the good thing that Wilbur Ross and, and Eric Holder and, and William Barr have in common right now. Nobody cares what Congress does. What we saw yesterday, they can't even enforce their own House rules against their own members. So there used to be a stigma attached to being held in contempt of Congress. There ain't no more. So I would tell Bill Barr, your reputation as an incredible lawyer is intact. Don't give it another thought. I, what, what would you say to anyone who would say to you, well, you know, because you guys held Eric Holder in contempt and Lois Lerner in contempt, you sort of, um, and it, you know, ended up not amounting to anything, that that is what changed the contempt game. Um, well, Lois Lerner was contemptuous of Congress. Eric Holder, 400 days. I, I wanted the documents, not the drama. Keep in mind, Martha, we were still looking for the documents in 2018. Long after Holder and long after President Obama were gone, we still wanted the documents. You've given Barr 100 days. 100 days. We gave Holder four times that. With respect to Wilbur Ross on the census. I think the administration mishandled it, and they do have some explaining to do. It'd be nice to explain it in front of a fair jury that has not already made up its mind, but when 60 Democrats vote to impeach you before Mueller has issued a single consonant or vowel in his report, that ain't a fair jury. And uh, they wrote a letter together asking Congress essentially to sort of discuss it further, to open the dialogue, to, you know, have an opportunity to go further down this road before this contempt hearing. And, you know, some look at this situation and say, you know, Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to go through the impeachment process with President Trump. She sees that as a political dead end. But these are sort of the little things that she can do to sort of appease some of those who would like her to go down that road that keeps that whole story alive. Yeah, there's some of that that goes on on both sides. Remember, Boehner and Ryan had, had another group. They wouldn't call the squad, but it was called the Freedom Caucus. And they wanted to impeach Rod Rosenstein. And they wanted to hold John Koskinen. Uh, they wanted to impeach John uh, Koskinen, the IRS commissioner. So, so it happens, which Congress has worked itself into obscurity, irrelevance. When you can go on the floor of the House as the president say, I'm going to do it with or without you, mm -hmm. and Congress stands up and cheers, you have rendered that branch of, of government feckless and irrelevant. Congratulations. Uh, the House doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. White House and Senate, House doesn't matter.